Welcome. We are very excited that you have chosen UNISA. The purpose of this video is to guide you through the online application process. In your browser, type www.unisa.ac.za. Then go to the UNISA corporate page. Click on Apply. You must select one of the categories based on the qualification that you wish to apply for. In this video, we will show the steps for a first-time UNISA undergraduate student. After you've made your selection, you will be on your way to start the process. In this video, we will assume that you have worked through step one and that you know how open distance e-learning works. We will assume that you have worked through step two and that you have decided on the career path that you want to follow. We will also assume that you have looked at UNISA course offerings and admission requirements in step three and that you have decided which qualification you are going to apply for. If you are comfortable with the first three steps, then click on step four. This page contains very important information. Please scroll down all the way to the end and ensure that you have read through everything. Make sure that you have all the required documents scanned and individually saved as indicated. Click on the link that says click here to apply online. This will open the online application form. You have to tick inside the undergraduate box to complete this action. Our example will be a first time entering UNISA student, so he has no student number. It is very important that you enter your surname and all your names exactly as it appears on your ID document and use the drop down arrows to select your date of birth then click on continue. Please read through the options given and select only the one that is relevant to you before you click on continue. Complete your SAID number in the block provided, then click continue. If you have indicated that you only have passed grade 12 and you have no other tertiary qualifications, then you will see the following screen. Click inside the relevant box as per your matric certificate. On the next page, you will be required to complete all the subjects that you've passed in matric. This is an example of a student who wrote the National Senior Certificate exams, where you list only the subjects passed and the ratings obtained. The following example is that of the previous senior certificate exams, which was written prior to the year 2008. Here you have to indicate your subjects, the grades, which used to be higher grade or standard grade or lower grade, and the symbol obtained. This is where you select the qualifications that you wish to apply for. Select by preferred choice. It is advisable to select a second alternative option in the event that you do not qualify for the first option or in the event that the first qualification is oversubscribed. Use the drop down arrows to select. Start with the college, then the category, then the qualification. Select a stream if applicable. You also want to consider making your alternative option a lower level qualification. For instance, if you are in matric this year and you are applying for admission to the Bachelor of Law degree, you may also want to apply for the higher certificate as an alternative in the event that your final results does not give you admission to the bachelor's degree. You will then see this summary to verify your selections. You must make absolutely sure that these are the correct qualifications that you have chosen and that you wish to apply for, because after this point, you will not be able to change your selections. If you are happy with what you see, then click on continue. 
In this section, you will have to capture your personal information. Some of the information will already be populated. Maiden surname is only for married women who have changed their surname. These applicants must also have a copy of their marriage certificate ready to upload. Do not type not applicable or NA in the field if this does not apply to you. Your contact details must be completed in the following section. Start with a country dialing code. In South Africa, we use plus 27 when typing your cell phone number. If you're, you do not have a different home phone number, capture your cell phone number in that field. The email address that you provide must be your own personal email address. You must have regular access to this account. The outcome of your application will be communicated to this address. Scroll down and make sure that you answer all the questions. The examination center field will already be populated. This cannot be changed because all examinations will be conducted online. Your address details must be completed in this section. Postal addresses should be followed by the town name only. Do not capture the suburb or the province. Physical addresses must include the suburb and the town name. Do not capture the province. In the example below, you'll start with the street number, the street name, the suburb in the same line and the town name directly underneath that. If you live in a townhouse or in a rural area, your address line must contain a house number or a stand number. It must contain a block or a building number. It must contain a zone or an extension number with the suburb in the same line. Town name at the bottom. Do not capture the province. You have to search the postal code by the name of the town. Click on the search button next to the postal code field. Type in your town name or only the first few letters of the town name. Make sure of the spelling. Click on search postal code. Select the postal code in the list which is relevant to your address and your area. If you've captured a PO box number, then the code you select must have a B next to it. If you've captured a physical address, your code must have an S next to it. Look at the example given below. Once you've completed, this is what the field will look like. If your home address is the same as your postal address, tick the Yes button in the box below. If your home address is different from your postal address, you will receive an additional address field to complete, which you will do in exactly the same way as the previous examples provided. The next page is required for statistical purposes. Please use the drop-down arrow and complete all the fields. This page requires detailed metric information. If you are currently in metric you will, and you have indicated so correctly in the beginning, you will not receive this page. Please populate the information correctly as per your certificate. Senior certificate, remember, is for those who wrote prior to 2008. National Senior Certificate is for those who wrote from 2008 and onwards. Ensure that you complete the correct year and province where you matriculated. If you are uncertain about your matric exam number, you can type your ID number in that field. Answer the following questions by ticking whichever is applicable to you. This is the declaration of undertaking. Read through this undertaking and make sure that you understand it. Scroll down all the way to the end because you have to agree 
by clicking in the Agree button to be able to submit your application. This is the second last step in the process. You have to upload your documents. The files must be individually saved and uploaded under the specific file location name. For example, the ID must be uploaded under the category ID or passport. Click on the Choose File button, then select the file location where you have saved your documents, as in the example below. You can either click on File Open or just double click on the file. The files will then automatically move to where you want them to be loaded. Then click the Upload button. The uploaded file will appear in the column on the far right. If you have any additional documents to upload, you can do this in the field below. Select the drop-down list to indicate the category. For instance, the marriage certificate must be uploaded under marriage certificate. Academic records for previous academic qualifications must be submitted or uploaded under that category. Once you are done, you are now ready to submit your application. This is the confirmation screen that you will receive. This letter is also automatically generated and sent to your email address. The email address that you've provided in this application. You will also receive an SMS confirmation of submission. Kindly read through this information all the way to the end. Scroll down, make sure you have made a note of your reference number because this is also the student number. The final step is to pay the application fee of 120 Rand. You can either use a credit card to safely pay online here, or you can click on the Pay Later button and deposit the 120 Rand into UNISA's account. The banking details is provided in the email that you received. This brings us to the end.